Welcome back everyone, Energy Fabricator here. Today we're going to cover two topics, the first of which is the construction of a steel frame, which will hold my vacuum chamber and vacuum system, and the other thing that we're going to be talking about is the black box, which is my universal power supply, that's what we're looking at right now. Uh, I've made a bit of progress on this build recently, so we'll go through all of that. We'll also have a look at what's coming up next on this build, and some design changes that I've made recently and we'll talk about why I've made those changes for the better. Uh, so for the moment let's get outside and chop up some scrap steel that I picked up for free 40 by 40 square hollow section we'll get that knocked up into about 35 smaller pieces and then we can get it all welded back together into the right size and shape that I need for my vacuum system. Um, I also picked up a couple of welded wire panels in a steel surround, which you can see just behind in the grey there. Um, picked up a couple of these panels, which I'm going to use as side panels for my vacuum system. You'll see how that all comes together later. But um, I also need to cut off some brackets, which you can see poking up off the ends there, because they were actually previously... Uh, designed for point of sale sort of merchandising in a, in a retail store so we're going to repurpose those panels here and all of this steel work I picked up for free so uh, that sort of helped to reduce the cost Neil's going to do some welding for me on this for free so um, at the end of the day hopefully we're going to have a um, decent frame fully constructed and uh, it shouldn't cost us too much at all so I'll go outside now we'll get everything set up We'll start cutting some steel work and once we've got everything cut, we'll come back and have a chat about this power supply before we head down to Neil's factory and do some welding.
Okay, all the steel work's been cut and prepped and ready for welding. We'll be heading down to Neil's factory soon to get that started. But before we do that, we'll just have a look at the final assembly on the face panels of the black box. So starting at the bottom, you can see I've mounted four 12 volt fans. And above that, I've got another panel which is just a blank panel. And then I've got a panel with 10 22mm diameter holes. Uh, that's just ready to accept any sort of switch or pilot light uh, that I decide to put in there later on down the track. Above that I've got three DC power supplies. Now I did say previously that I wasn't going to have any DC on board this thing but um, I've decided against that so there you go. So I've got one over this side here. You can see I've got a momentary switch here in the green on and off switch there and negative and positive. I've got another one here, negative and positive. Both of those will be 12 volt power supplies. Um, over on this side you can see I've got another momentary and an on and off switch and then I've got a negative and two positives for um, dual output. And in the center here you can see I've got the emergency stop switch and the on and off switch which is the control circuit for all of these power supplies and above that I've got the main control circuit emergency stop switch I've got a pilot light and locked out on and off switch so once this is locked out nothing here will work at all um, and then either side of that I've got two emergency stop switches another two here and the pilot lights for those corresponding emergency stop switches which are the switches for the variax which are up here so so just starting above that panel we've got the 15 amp variac we've got one two three four momentary push button switches which will operate all four of these variax the other three are up here this is the 8 amp variac and two 750 milliamp variacs and above that I've got the little high voltage sign and the flashing lights there will also be a um, alarm sound in this thing so I'm setting it up so that it'll run some um, predominantly impulse current experiments so there's a lot of work to be done on this thing a lot of stuff on board like um, onboard ballasting which is going to be switchable and uh, modular we'll also have onboard power factor correction um, and that'll be selectable as well in some sort of binary arrangement uh, we've got a lot of heat dissipation that we've got to concern ourselves about and we're going to do some wire testing uh, which we'll talk about later on uh, yeah there's a bit of work to be done but um, it's all going to be pretty modular. There's a lot of uh, other stuff that I haven't told you about like soft starting capabilities so that we don't burn out our power factor correction capacitors and other components in the experiments further on in the system. So um, there's a lot more to it than just putting a variac in a box and running it off a couple of contactors so I'm taking my time and doing it properly so that I only have to do it once and um, it should hold up to um, what I have planned. Now there are a couple of things that I'm not quite happy about in this first stage of the build. The first one was due to my own laziness. Now if we have a look here you can see a whole bunch of scratches in the surface. I knew about that before I even sent it off to get anodized. I was meaning to get around to it and clean them up but um, I ran out of time so as you can see there's a few scratches there that I didn't get out but if you're a couple of meters away you can't even see them and you really have to be in the right light to be able to pick it see even there you can barely see those scratches that I showed you before if we get into the right light down here they really stand out but um, no major consequence there the other thing that I encountered was the fact that each panel 
was a slightly different shade of black. How can I, I can only put that down to the fact that uh, I salvaged all of the aluminium pieces at different times from different batches of aluminium. So I'm guessing each batch had different impurities um, and gave a slightly different black finish. I, I do know that all of these pieces went on the same rod in the same bath for the same duration of time so um, that's about all I can put the colour differences to uh, but again I mean we're not building a piece of artwork here we're just building a functional power supply that looks reasonably decent and um, I think that's good enough for what I was after uh, so moving on to the next stage which involves installing a whole bunch of ballast transformers on some sort of scaffold levels here. Um, I was originally planning on using T-slot extrusion in the 40mm wide version. Um, after having a chat with a guy down at the um, place where I get it from, he's talked me into using this stuff. It's a 20 by 20 instead of a 40 by 40 and it's a much better idea because by the time I get five or six levels of this stuff it's going to add up to a couple of hundred millimetres overall and I can reduce that by 50% by using this stuff instead which is only half as high it'll still handle all the weight and it'll do the same job and it's cheaper so uh, it'll give me a bit more access inside the unit unfortunately I couldn't buy any of that at the time it was on back order and wasn't due in till mid to late August which is about now, so um, I might be going back there very shortly, getting some more lengths of this stuff. We'll have to cut it all up, and that'll be the next stage, filling up this massive gap here with levels of transformers and ballast transformers, and we'll have some panels for power factor correction capacitors and all that sort of stuff. But that's the next stage. Um, the other thing I have is a whole bunch of wire samples that you can see in those Ziploc bags there that's sitting on top of a ceramic Bakelite board uh, which is going to be my little test assembly so that we can test all of those different wires that I've got from different manufacturers um, but we'll talk about all of that later on and I'll probably do a separate video just on the wire testing um, I think it'll be an important part of the process to, to actually test the wire to make, make sure we're picking the right one for the job um, but yeah so now that we've had a look at that that's the next stage building that testing the wire once that's done we can start wiring everything up uh, so let's go down to Neil's factory and do some welding on the vacuum chamber frame That is beautiful! Now what? So now I've got the frame back at home. I've taken some time out and ground all the welds flush 
and it's all looking pretty good so far it's all nice and square now the next stage is to just take it back to Neil's factory next weekend just to finish off the last five percent of the welding just got a couple more braces to put on there then we can fit off the casters to the base there'll be six casters and then we can do a trial assembly and fit off of some aluminium t-slot extrusion which will run the full length of both sides of the top rails there um, we'll also be making a t-slot extrusion frame to go into this panel here and that'll hold the uh, an electrical control panel behind that panel there'll be gas supplies on board over here uh, diffusion pump whenever I get it will be mounted in the middle somewhere and this cardboard box has my backing pump in it which will be mounted pretty much where it is at the moment so we'll do a bit of a trial assembly before we strip it all down and send the frame off to get either galvanized or painted or maybe both I have made provisions for galvanizing with internal venting of all of the main members and even the angle bracing um, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of holes all over it 8 to 10 mil holes but when it's all fully assembled and completed most of those holes will be covered up anyway and you won't see them until next time, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and leave comments. What are you doing? You, you can't be taking... I hope I'm not in that picture. What are you doing now? There's no more... Just pretend I'm not here. Oh, pretend I'm not you here. You give me a complex. <laughs> I'm keeping you honest. Oh, wait a minute, you should be taking photos of the welds. Oh. Got that on camera. You got the whole. <laughs> I got the whole thing. I hope you're gonna edit it. I want them seeing my face. Not good for my business. <laughs>